Hello and welcome back. Uh, you know, it's been a while. It's been two weeks, like we said. Uh, again, if you're new, bi-weekly. Uh, so we're recording this week. We won't have an episode next week, but then we'll have an episode the next week. Uh, but welcome back. Terrible takes. It's me and John Adam. Uh, Holden's currently at Tech right now, and Lucas is doing his thing with the uh, with the YouTube channel, Facebook, with the, uh, the 318 Legends. Uh, we just had Maddie Hayden episode drop, so go check that out. Uh, and then, yeah, look out for more. Uh, but uh, also sponsored uh, by Revival Pizza Company, uh, 165 uh, in Sterlington, Louisiana. Uh, so go check them out. Awesome food. Uh, but it's March, March 21st. Can only mean one thing that's basketball and that's march madness the tournament is finally here uh you know as we are recording we've already seen upsets uh with Duquesne uh beating byu uh oakland is currently on the verge of upsetting kentucky uh so exciting stuff uh here's your march madness part two episode the tournament is here we're going to be looking kind of breaking down the brackets, what we see, potential busts, potential upsets, uh, and potential sleepers, and who our Final Four is and our champion. So, since we've already had an upset today, we saw Dayton come back on like a 22-2 to two run and just beat Nevada at the death, uh, and then Oakland on the verge of upsetting Kentucky. Let's bring out our sleepers. Who are the sleepers, John Adam? Who is your sleepers? You can get one, two, three. Give me some sleepers and why. Um, well, I mean, you think of sleepers and you probably go like outside of the top five, if I had to guess ranking wise. Um, but dude, it, this this year is so interesting because like you can have teams you can have teams that are in the top five dominate and play really well if they have everything they've got. Like just recently with Kansas, their player went down, and now he's he's hurt. He's not going to be able to play. And so does that affect Kansas going down the road? Do they even make the Sweet 16? Like, everybody probably would have them doing if they're, all their players were healthy. But with the news, it's like, well, could they go out early in the first round? Like, it's – there's so many question marks to to each team. It's hard to really pick a sleeper because – at any point, anybody could be a pick that goes really far, like New Mexico State. Are we going to see them possibly go far this year? Because they, they had a good season. Uh, we thought McNeese might be doing something. Obviously, right now they're currently playing in Zaga, and they're they're getting beat like a drum. But it's it's like, you know, looking at McNeese's season, you don't – it's hard to tell because of who they play and – how they're going to come out and play against one of these top teams in the country. Anybody can do it, as we're seeing with Kentucky right now. They're struggling right now. And so it's like, could they possibly take an upset, which I'm sure we'll have an eye on that during this episode because it should be over by the time we're done. Um, but, man, it's <clears> – <throat> I don't really have a single one, but if there were a couple that I could maybe point out, um, one would be – I, it's not exactly one, but it, it kind of was for me. Like, Tennessee this year was a team that I think didn't exact – they they played really well, and I know that they're ranked number two, but as far as, like, dominance goes recently in college basketball, Tennessee's not been really that team. On the girls' side, yes, but, like, in men's basketball, they're not really a team you've ever really seen. And so not necessarily a sleeper as far as this year goes – but definitely a new name in the tournament that is ranked high that could possibly do something this year. Um, I had Gonzaga earlier in the year uh, going pretty far, um, and I know that they're beating the brakes off of McNeese right now, but their side of the bracket doesn't seem super difficult. I don't think it's like necessarily the worst side uh, by any means, so I think if they can get past, which I think they will, McNeese, and get to the next – the next stage of the bracket, I think they will have a decent chance of going pretty far based on who they will end up playing. Um, obviously, Creighton is is on their side as well. Um, 
but I, man, I can't really put a finger on exactly one in general. Um, I think that's part of what makes March Madness so great is that anybody can go on a run if they find chemistry within the team and maybe get some breaks. I mean, there may be an off night for one of these big schools and they can't shoot or the crap. I mean, we've we've had both of those issues with both of our teams, North Carolina and Kansas, both oh, yeah. um, this whole season as far as field goal percentage and whatnot. And, I mean, if you can't hit shots, then the other team obviously can and can stick around, uh, which is what you don't want. I mean, you want to try to beat these teams by 20, uh, kind of like what Arizona did today. You know, they did what they were supposed to. You want to see that out of your Carolina. team. You don't want to you don't want to see a stumble right out of the gate. Uh like if Kentucky were to survive tonight, it would, you know, I don't know how it would look going forward for them. And I have them going pretty far and I think a lot of people do decently as well. Um but I man, it's that's March madness for you. It's like anybody can really show themselves. Illinois could have a great a great tournament. Um Florida could somehow you know, show something. I I don't have Florida going super far, but you never know. I mean, it's it's one of those things they could beat, end up beating Houston. Uh, but we'll see, man. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to your to add on to what you said, all you need is six games. That's all you need to win a national title. Just six games that you can really put together, and you and you and you won a title. Uh, I mean, you see, you saw with North Carolina when they were in AC when they lost to uh, Kansas in 2022. I mean, they played five great, five, technically five and a half great games, couldn't finish it out. But, you know, as an AC, you beat the number one team in, in your region in Baylor. You go on a run, you beat Duke with Coach K and all the hype, and you shut them down. And, you know, similar to like North Carolina being a sleeper, you know, there are teams out here that can make a run. And can surprise people. And again, all you need six good games, and you win a title. Uh, for my sleepers, honestly, I think New Mexico. I think New Mexico is a great sleeper. Nobody is showing the Mountain West any love. I feel like, and their team that is top forty in offense. They're like right at forty on uh, offensive efficiencies, and they're top twenty-five in defense. They're like, I think twenty-two or twenty-three in defensive uh, efficiency. And so I think that they could shock some people. I wouldn't be surprised if they beat Clemson by five or more points. I wouldn't be surprised if they beat Baylor in the next round. And honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised because of Arizona's track record, them beating Arizona. Now, do yeah. I think that makes it to the final four? Absolutely. You know, in my terrible takes bracket, I got to double down. I've got New Mexico going to the final four. All right. They're my sleeper team. They're like my Loyola Chicago, my. FAU last year. They're my team that is going on the defensive side of the ball. And in recent trends, you know, if you got a good 25 defense, you're going to beat people. Same with Duquesne. Duquesne, a better defensive team than BYU. And they beat BYU. BYU has one of their worst shooting performances they've ever had. Uh, another team, kind of like what you said, uh, I don't have them in my terrible takes bracket, but I do have them kind of going far as Tennessee. I do have Tennessee doing well. Uh, in a majority of the brackets that I've created, uh, I think Auburn, I know some people don't really consider them a sleeper team, but considering the region that they are in, I do think that yeah. they're a sleeper team. They're like really hot right now. They look really good on the offensive and defensive side currently. And I think that they could shock UConn in the Sweet 16. Um, and if I had to give like another one, honestly, I'd say probably maybe Creighton. I think they're good offensively and defensively as well. I mean, they play in a pretty good conference in the Big East. Big East is considered that power six school. So I think they could make some noise. Hopefully Oakland one, can pull it off. Yeah. They'll make some noise. One that I would probably look at, too, that I didn't just think about uh, is probably Duke. Uh, as much as I don't like Duke <clears throat> in multiple of my, my uh, brackets that I've done, I've had them going pretty far and actually – and a couple of them upsetting Houston uh, to get, yeah. you know, to the Final Four. Um, I just think, like, just watching them play us, uh, you know, obviously we we had the upper hand, but they're a good team. They're still a team that can beat anybody, in my opinion. Um, I think they've got the talent to do it. 
they're good defensively and offensively. Uh, in those types of games, it'll be like who comes to play, who really shows up. Um, but Duke yeah. could make a run uh, uh, easily. I mean, it's it's so it's so like questionable for every single team. Like with Alabama, we've you know we've kind of touched on them before. It's like they can put up 115, or they can not make anything from three and have a terrible field goal percentage and only put up 60 something points uh, and lose by 15. And yeah. so you have teams like that who, if they get hot, they could make it far. They can make it really far and run on the offense. And then you've got teams like North Carolina who are more defensive minded. Uh, they can score mm-hmm. points, obviously, but they, they play really good defense. And so it's like, do you rely on these defensive teams to make it far? And most of the time I think that works. But if Alabama were to catch a hot hand and start rolling, I mean, who knows? They could make it far. Uh, they could beat Arizona and North Carolina and, and go on to the final four. Here's another team, and purely off of defensive standards, Michigan State. Michigan State, as much as you don't want to hear that, they are one of those teams that could either be boom or bust based on their defensive yeah. numbers. They could shut down North Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina is defensive more defensive, and that does play a huge role in playing a team like Michigan State because they rely on their defense. So, I mean, if North Carolina has the better offense, I mean, they're probably going to win. But Michigan State, after today, kind of looks like a team that you yeah. may want to watch out for when they play a number one seed. Uh, but that's yeah, going to be exciting. And Yeah, like you said, honestly, it's the beauty of March. March Madness. It's in the name, Madness. I mean, yeah. like Dayton and Nevada. I was texting my girlfriend's parents, and they were like, yeah, this is just crazy. And I was like, oh, there's only one answer. It's March. March Madness. Uh, And, you know, what goes along with March Madness is upsets. So looking ahead, who do you think will be upset in this tournament? Again, could be one team, two teams, three teams. could be five. Who do you see being upset? Okay, so – I don't like. It, I guess it depends on what round. I mean, obviously, we we don't know much yeah. right now, but just looking at maybe rounds coming up, I've already kind of given one. I think Duke could upset Houston. Uh, I think that's a possibility coming down the line. Uh, I mean, I could see Creighton losing. They've you know they've had a history of being really good in the season, being ranked like around where they're at right now maybe a little worse. Um, maybe flip them with like Gonzaga where Gonzaga's like a one to three and they're like a four to six or something, four to seven ranked team. But I think Creighton could possibly get upset at some point. Uh just going off their their kind of their history of of being in March Madness. They can win a game and then lose in the very next round. And I'm not saying they're the same team that they've been, but I just think personally they could possibly slip up and lose. Um, I mean, talking about Tennessee, they're in the SEC. They have had a great season. Could they slip up? I mean, I don't think UConn or Houston will lose in the first round. I think, you know, they're fine. I think it'll be maybe getting to the Sweet 16 and they lose or something like that. Um but as far as like maybe first round or like uh, unsuspe- unsuspected losses, I could see maybe Creighton taking a loss early than what people think. Uh, or Alabama. I think Alabama could possibly lose, um, if not this round, the next one, because your offense has to be stellar to win you games. And one off night could be the first round, second round, whatever one off night and you're going to lose. And so they could be a, a very quick loss as well. Yeah. Uh, if I had to think of, uh, you know, possible like upsets uh, heading on, obviously I've also given one in New Mexico. I think New Mexico will make a run. I think they can upset based on their defensive and offensive numbers. They're kind of well balanced all around and they'll make you pay uh, if you turn, if you turn the ball over. Uh, but if I had to choose like an upset, like for the next round, honestly, I could probably see Illinois losing in the next round. Their offense, I mean, their defense is terrible. They're 93rd right now in Kim Palm when it comes to defensive efficiency. 
Uh, yeah, they did look good when Moorhead State was making making the game close. They did find a way to win. But Illinois, those teams that don't have really good defense, Kentucky is one of them. They're currently about to get upset right now. Uh, their defense is terrible. Alabama, there's a good chance that they could get upset. However, Charleston has a terrible defense. Uh, and here's another one, you know, Kansas. As much as that pains me to say, Kansas has a great chance of being upset because the team we're playing against tonight shoots the three ball. They're very small, but they shoot the three, and Kansas can't really make threes. And if we turn the ball over and they're making threes, you can kiss the KU fans goodbye because there's no chance we beat them. Uh, I think Oregon could possibly make a run. They're looking hot. I could see them upsetting Creighton in the next round. You mentioned uh, you could see Creighton upset. You know, just like that, they – I agree with you. They have that trend of doing well in the regular season. And then when it comes to down to, like, when it matters, they kind of choke. Uh, if I had to pick a one seed, though, to be the first team to lose – I'm going to be honest, I think it could be Purdue. I can totally see Purdue being the first one seed to get upset. Yep. Uh, it's not because of their uh, fairly Dickinson incident, uh, but, you know, they just seem like a team that will play down to their opponent. Uh, and, you know, we saw it last year. Uh, we saw it years be- uh, two years, three years before when St. Peter's made their run. Uh, but those are my upsets. I'm going to call it right now. New Mexico upset over Baylor in the second round. Uh, we're going to see Oakland make it to the Sweet 16. Uh, we're going to see Oregon make it to the Sweet 16, going on those 11 seeds. And Duquesne, another 11 seed, going to the Sweet 16. Those are my four upsets that I know are going to hit. So if you're a betting person, go ahead, hit the betting, hit the bet button. Uh, I'd put $1,000 down. You're going to be making a huge profit. Uh, but... <laughs> Moving on, uh, Final Four. You know, everybody wants to know who our Final Four teams are. So, who are your Final Four teams and why? All right, so I've got UConn, obviously, in the Final Four against North Carolina. Now, I know there's, you know, UConn has been more dominant, I guess you could say, all season than North Carolina has. Uh, we've just North Carolina's lost a lot of a lot of games that didn't exactly make sense. Uh, I mean, it happens, but you don't want to see you know your team lose games like that. We lost to Clemson, who did make the you know the bracket and everything, but it's just like you want to see more dominance, I guess, out of your team and uh, your conference and stuff. But I still think we've got what it takes. I think that um i don't know i just i trust us and i think that arizona might give us a problem down the road um but i think out of everybody else on that side of the bracket i know you've got baylor and everything like that but i just think that we have maybe one of the better defenses on our side of the bracket and i think when it comes down to it obviously i'm not gonna i want to pick my team, I'm going to pull for them. And so I uh, I think they will play UConn. And UConn is, I mean, they're just – explains for themselves why they're why I think they should be there. Um, and then on the other side, I have Duke. And I, I said them a minute ago because I just think that – They've got the talent that they need. I know it's going to be tough. They will have to go through Houston, and Houston's been dominant, kind of like UConn has all season. But Houston, I think, can slip up against Duke in this game if they get there, obviously. Um, Both teams have to make it to that point. But I just think, you know, the history behind Duke, they are very gritty, very gritty team, and they like to – they typically are – Oakland has just – Beaten Kentucky, eighty to seventy six. Oakland is moving on to the next round. Go mother freaking Grizzlies! What? Like actually? Oakland has beaten Kentucky. What? 
What? Wow. Oakland has beaten Kentucky. This is exactly what we needed heading into the tournament. Kentucky is back. They take that L because they suck. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, there goes my bracket. I'm so happy believe, right now. I can't believe that happened. NCAA all-time wins. Wow. You actually put them in your bracket to go to the Sweet 16? Okay, yeah. So I just want to say I have one perfect bracket remaining. And fortunately, it involves Samford beating Kansas tonight. <laughs> what? This Midwest region that I have has Tennessee and Oregon in the Sweet 16, TCU versus Stanford, and Tennessee versus TCU in the Elite Eight. My final four is Houston versus Tennessee in North Carolina and San Diego State, and North Carolina wins it all. <laughs> I have upsets galore in this. I literally have Vermont making it to the Sweet 16. I have Oakland making it to the Sweet 16. This dra this bracket will not hit. I have Northwestern beating Stetson. All right. That's how much I'm confident this bracket will not hit. Bro. But my one perfect bracket. That's crazy, that, dude. That is crazy. crazy. <laughs> Again, it won't hit because I somehow accidentally picked Stetson to beat UConn. Uh, I mean, never say oh, never. Right. You didn't mean to, or you did. I accidentally picked Stetson to beat UConn. Oh no! So like, you didn't mean to. I didn't mean to, but wow! Oh my gosh! Wow! Go Oakland, dude! You're an Oakland fan. Vamos! Oh, oh my Oakland, God. up the Oakland Grizz. Oakland! Go Oakland! This Jack, is for you. Jack Golke, however you say it, shout out to you, bro. Ten three-pointers made. Ten threes. The bank was open. He was splashing them. He was like prime John Adam in his driveway. If you know, you know, and if you don't, that was a time to be alive, man. The bank was open. If you saw John Adam in his driveway, the bank was open. He was hitting 10 threes like it was nothing. But Jack <laughs> Golke, Jack, my man, I'm rooting for you and I'm rooting for Oakland. Wow. That is That's crazy. Wow. Thank goodness I get to take more L's with that. So anyways, sorry about that interruption with the Oakland-Kentucky thing. That was just crazy. Oakland beating Kentucky. Uh, but – so anyway, John Adam, your final four. Who do you have for your final four and why? Okay, so I'm going to give you two different final fours because Holden posted my terrible takes bracket, and it's slightly different than what I actually think. So whenever I was going through that bracket on the terrible takes thing, I just picked what I thought would be the best scenario for my bracket to possibly win out, but I don't think that that's actually going to happen. Uh, it's I know it's a weird situation, but uh, I'll give you the terrible takes uh, bracket first. My final four there um, that Holden posted. I have UConn versus North Carolina, and then I've got Houston versus Creighton. Uh, those teams have been solid all year. I know Creighton has had iffy uh, – situations in the past in the uh march madness tournament um but i think that they can get it done and obviously houston and yukon were dominant all year uh unc i know they lost in the conference championship uh game against uh, nc state but they've been good all year beating duke and they've just had a good record and good good competition and i think that they that can get them through uh to get to the final four at least um in the picks that I actually think are that I'm going to be kind of pressing more, I guess you could say, uh, UConn against UNC. So that doesn't change anything. But on the other side, I have two different changes, uh, and that's going to be Duke. Um, Duke has been a very 
a very solid team all year. I know that they they may not be as dominant as they were in years past, um, but they still put competition against anybody. Uh, you give them anybody, I think that they'll have a close game. Uh, I don't think they'll get blown out by anybody. Um, and then, actually, I'm going to go with Tennessee – on my bottom, uh, I know that I talked about them possibly getting upset, um, possibly, um, but also being kind of an underdog. I mean, they're just kind of that that questionable team. Uh, they're ranked really high. Um, they had a good season record wise, um, but you haven't really seen Tennessee uh, in this in this image, I guess you could say, going into the tournament like this. Uh, and I want to see an SEC team in there, and so I'm going to throw them in there. I think that out of everybody's side of the bracket i think the sec team comes out of that area and so i think tennessee will will be able to make it out uh, and hopefully play duke and then we'll see what goes on from there so there are my f- two top four teams um they could all be wrong uh at this point obviously with kentucky going down um anything can happen but we will see you can throw rocks at me if I get any wrong because I already do that myself. Well, uh, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, the ones that I actually think are going to make it, uh, I think UConn and Houston are going to be two of the teams that make it. Uh, kind of similar to the 2021 tournament when Baylor and Gonzaga were like the standalones. Uh, they were dominant all year. Everyone kind of had Gonzaga or Baylor when playing against each other. I think UConn and Houston are potentially going to play each other. Uh, And then the other two, uh, if I'm being honest, I really see North Carolina or Arizona in that third coming out of the the West region and then the Midwest region. Honestly, I see Purdue or Tennessee. I I know it's a little chalky on what I think, uh, but that's – they those teams I mentioned have been dominant literally all season. Their numbers are through the blue defensively. Uh, offensively, they're putting up good numbers. And so those are my – I know I said six teams, but those are my four teams that I think are going to make it. Uh, if you're looking at my terrible takes bracket, uh, you know, got to mix it up a little bit. If there is a team to beat UConn, I do believe it's Auburn. Uh, again, Auburn, five – in defensive top five, they're number five in defensive efficiency and they're number ten in offensive efficiency. Uh, they're coming into the tournament really hot. They just ran through the SEC tournament. Uh, I think they could give UConn a run for their money, and I think Auburn can and probably will take down UConn. Uh, the next team, I've got Houston. You know, you got to show the number one team, the one seed, a little bit of love, uh, and you got to have a one seed in there somewhere. Uh, so I've got Houston. I think they played well all year. They played in the best conference in college basketball in the Big 12. Uh, so they're ready. Essentially, every Big 12 game was a tournament game. Uh, so I think Houston's going to make the Final Four. Uh, I've got Creighton. Um, I do think Purdue will either lose early or lose in the Elite Eight. Uh, I think they're chokers, and I think they're frauds. Um, and I think Creighton will – Creighton or Tennessee will expose them. Uh, for my terrible takes, got Creighton because, you know, why not? Why not show a little bit of fun in there? If it wasn't Creighton, it was probably going to be Oregon, I'll be honest. Uh, So I got Creighton. And then finally, you guys have heard me talk about this team twice now, but give me New Mexico, the Lobos, New Mexico to glory. I love this team. Mountain West has not gotten any love. and They played a gauntlet of a schedule all year. Give me New Mexico. They're hot. They're under the radar. They're top 25 in defense, top 40 in offense. Those are the numbers you need when heading into the tournament to make a big run. They've got it. I think everyone should be on the lookout for New Mexico. Um, I think they're here to shock the nation, shock the world. So those are my two sets of Final Four teams. Uh, and I've got Houston winning it all. Did you say you're champion? I did not. Okay. Well, I've got Houston beating Auburn in the title game. Uh, I think Houston's going to win it all. And the terrible takes, and then I either see UConn or Houston wins off. Uh, so, John, your champion, who do you have winning? Give me North Carolina. Just give me North Carolina, and either one. Big Tar Heel guy. Look, hey, look, man. If if I don't choose them, then obviously I don't have much to look forward to. But in in my world, if they are there in the Final Four. They might as well go all the way to the end. I'd ra- I would almost rather them 
if they're going to lose before the Final Four, I'd almost rather them just lose in the first round or something like that. I know they didn't, but, like, that's kind of how I feel about it. Just get it over with. Yeah, that's how I feel sometimes. Well, I mean, except for this year, right? Kansas has kind of struggled, so a Sweet 16 is actually a win in my book. Uh, But, you know, if we're going to lose and we're going to make the Elite Eight, I'm going to have high hopes and I want them to make the Final Four. Uh, I feel like the Elite Eight, and I, you may agree. I think we can all agree the Elite Eight has got to be the worst round to lose outside of the first round. <laughs> yeah. You're a high seed. It's got to be the Elite Eight because not only were you decent all year as a high seed, you did all you could to get to the Elite Eight where you should go to. Everyone thinks you're going to the Final Four and then you lose. Or if yeah. you're like a four seed or a three seed, you're supposed to make it to the Sweet 16. You pull up an upset. You have high hopes and your team just loses. Yep. Like and you fall just short of being Final Four. Like Final Four is awesome. And yeah, if you lose in the Final Four, it's sad. But you know, you gotta think, wow, we made it to the Final Four with four best teams. But the Elite Eight's gotta suck. That's gotta be the worst because you don't even get a trophy out of that, man. You don't get right. a trophy. You don't get a participation second place for getting to the Elite Eight. If you win the Elite Eight, you get a trophy there. So at least some yeah. people who make the Final Four get a trophy out of it. But yeah, I think we can agree that uh, the Elite Eight. Uh, it's got to be the worst place to lose, and yeah, I agree. With yeah, you. it's pretty terrible. Um, I'll I'll say North Carolina just because if for whatever reason my brackets work out or my predictions work out and they make it to that point, um, uh, obviously I won't be too terribly defeated if they were to lose in the Final Four, um, because it's like you know you're one of the best four teams in college basketball, yay! But at the same time, like if I'm being realistic, UConn has been very good all season. Houston has been very good all season. It's hard to not choose one of those two. Obviously, in all my brackets, I'm for the most part, I, I've thrown UConn in a couple of them to win it. Um, but I'm going to try to have North Carolina in there to give me something to root for. Um, and while I'm not going to pull against my team, if North Carolina plays Houston and uh, I'm not going to pick Houston, you know, I'm, I'm going to pull for North Carolina. And it's kind of one of those situations where you're sitting there and it's like, well, I picked Houston to win, but I'm a North Carolina fan. So I just try to make it easy on myself. Um, but if I had to say a team outside of North Carolina, I'd probably choose UConn for obvious reasons. Yeah. They're really dominant. I think they will probably end up winning the whole thing. Um, but in my brackets, I've got North Carolina winning. I've got the Jayhawks winning it all, actually, after today. Um the boys saw the boys in the boat. Uh, it's about it's a rowing movie about the Olympic team uh, back in like the Great Depression era, winning the gold medal and uh, they're rowing. Uh, you know the team watched that last night and I think they're ready. Kind of reminds me of my travel baseball team when I was younger. Um, you know we went and we watched cars, uh, and we came out like we weren't supposed to win the tournament at all. We we're actually the worst team. Uh, we watched cars together the night before, and we won the whole freaking thing. So, uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of that. So, just want you to know the Jayhawks are going to win it all. You heard it here. New Mexico versus Kansas in the title game. Uh, go Jayhawks. Jayhawks come out on top. The score is going to be 69-65. to 65. Uh, El Marco Jackson is going to drop 15.5 boards. Johnny Furphy with 20 points. Uh, Hunter Dickinson, 15-10, double-double. Uh, and Dewan with 20 assists. And uh, five spears. So, um, yeah, you heard it here. Rock Chalk, Jayhawk, uh, March Madness. So, uh, oh, so. hang on, hang on. Do we need to tell the the fans about a possible situation between me and you later on in this? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it. A little alert, sneak peek. Alert. John Adams got a huge message. You made it this far. Listen okay, to John Adams so, right now. So. For the past several years, me and Jacob have done little little bets when it comes to whether it be March Madness or Super Bowl or whatever it was. Um, we've had those in the past, and it just makes it it makes it more fun to watch. Um, so we don't exactly have anything set yet. Um, we're going to kind of play it by ear and and see what we can work up. Um, but we, we will have some stakes me and between me and Jacob. Uh, probably it's going to be something like picking a team and if they make it all the way, or it may just be waiting until the final four or whatever and picking two teams, something like that, um, and putting something down. I don't know what it, I've gotten a perm uh, for losing to Jacob. Yeah. Um, Rock shot. He's had to wear a shirt to 
to his university all day. And so it, it yeah. something yeah. like along those lines, we will let y'all all know uh, what the bet is and then what the the repercussions of losing that bet will be or winning it. Who knows? Um, so keep an eye out for that within the next couple episodes. We will probably have something worked up to be able to tell you all so y'all can look forward to probably like a video or something or a picture or whatever it is uh, posted to our Instagram uh, will be where something happens if something does happen. Uh, but y'all will be the first to know. Honestly, I'd probably expect it uh, this upcoming week. I know we don't have an episode on Thursday, but I'd expect something on uh, this upcoming week because we'll know the Sweet 16, the Elite 8 matchups next week. So some big bets may be happening next week yep. between me and John Adams. So, yeah, you guys stay tuned. It's always a treat. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> may the best man win. Uh, but that's all we have for our March Madness segment. Uh, crazy stuff. Uh, if you this was very long, we apologize. Not really. I don't really care how you feel. Um, go Oakland, Rock Chalk, and go Lobos, and go Tar Heels. So that's all you need to know for March Madness. Upset, <laughs> upset, madness. Uh, and lots of tears. Moving on. Uh, <clears throat> you know, what's a terrible takes episode if we don't talk football, I feel like. Uh, so we're going to go around the world some sports. Um, however, the one sport that's kind of made major headlines this week outside of March Madness uh, has got to be the NFL. It's got to be the NFL. We saw so many trades, so many weird moves. And so I'm going to say, John, what stood out to you? Do you have like a surprise? Do you like, is there like a shocker? Or what, um, what <clears throat> I'd probably start off with with probably talking about Saquon to the Eagles. I know that there was a lot of questions as far as where he was going to go or if he was going to go anywhere. Um, I kind of feel bad for him. His whole career has been with the Giants, and it's like all that talent, not wasted. He obviously had good good seasons, but also on top of injuries and just not having not having the teams that we might thought could they could make a playoff run or whatever it is. Um, but him going to the Eagles, I know he's – He's getting up there in age, and and injuries have been an issue, and so that could be affecting his play down the line. But as far as we know, he's Saquon, and getting him was a big pickup for the Eagles, in my opinion. Uh, I actually kind of believe that uh, DeAndre Swift kind of uh, – I think he had the talent to to have what they needed, but they didn't utilize him well. I agree. Um, I agree. <clears throat> so I'm not going to say that – you know, it, it hurts to get Saquon. I think Saquon is the better running back, but I think the Eagles didn't have to make a trade, honestly. I think they had what they needed as far as running game pieces go. Uh, they just don't utilize them correctly. But anyway, uh, I think Saquon is a big name, obviously going, going to the Eagles uh, and helping out that cast of, of superstars. Um, I did see something uh, pretty interesting earlier that I didn't exactly realize. So Keenan Allen's trade. Um. He had actually been offered like three different deals. Hmm. I think he like declined all of them or just I don't know exactly how that all goes down. But yeah, he he like didn't want to stay basically is kind of what happened uh, with that. Didn't he go to the Bears? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Keenan Allen to the Bears. But he declined some offers that the Chargers were literally trying to give him. Um, the Bears offense Loki kind of looks. Pretty good. I'll be honest. I mean, if they get Caleb Williams in the first pick, there's your QB. And then you've got Andre Swift in the backfield. Yep. You've got Keenan Allen. He's a wide receiver who's veteran, experienced. He'll get you he'll catch DJ ball. Moore. DJ Moore. Yeah, you got DJ Moore. He's young. He's fast. He's quick. Uh, you got Cole Komet as a tight end. You know, he's yeah. relatively young. Kind of like could be a scary play, offense, but, man. You know, I'm just saying. Bears, and the Bears. Look the out, Bears typically have a pretty seven good wins. Defense. Seven or eight wins, they're coming. Yeah. They're going to miss the Maybe. playoffs, but they're going to get seven, eight wins, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, uh, do you Ravens? have any? Yeah. The Ravens. Honestly, I think they're Super Bowl contenders heading into the next season. Uh, I mean, I feel like we say that almost every year because they got – Yeah. They're back. Yeah. Uh, but they lack that elite running back position, I feel like, and they've always been plagued by injuries. So I think that Derrick Henry trade – to the Ravens, you know, he's in the backfield. 
uh, for him, that's a great get, in my opinion, yeah. for the Ravens because they lacked it. All they did was run with Lamar. Uh, now you have Lamar. He doesn't have to put a lot of stress on his legs. You've got Derrick Henry in the backfield. Makes it harder for teams to defend against you because not only do you have Lamar who scrambles, you got Derrick Henry who can just run you over in a second. I mean, he's a tank. He's a unit. Uh, so the, the trade there to the Ravens, exciting. Uh, Kirk Cousins to the Falcons. I'm going to be honest, so unexpected. I was not expecting that at all. Uh, I'll be interested to see what the Vikings do because uh, – the quarterback right now is, I think, Sam Darnold, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Justin Jefferson, uh, I'm sure you've got a lot of words right now with the Vikings management on uh, who you want as your quarterback. Uh, yeah. I actually saw something. Uh, I, I'm, I know I'm getting slightly off track. Um, there's, like, a, a quarterback who hasn't been in the league in a while. He used to play for the Packers. He, like, streams. He does, like – he plays mad yeah, and stuff. Kirk Benhart guy. Kirk Who's talking Kirk? about – Sam Darnold the other day, and he was kind of like saying something about like Sam Darnold's only like twenty six years old, and really he was in the league at twenty. Hmm. Did not and know that. What he was saying is like if you look at quarterbacks and how they've like they've grown in their production of being a good quarterback, they're always around like the 25, 26 year old range. And they always had like a slow start until they got their opportunity and they, they took time to progress. Uh, and so I'm not saying Sam Darnold's going to be a great quarterback, but what he was kind of saying is like, don't give up hope on Sam Darnold. Don't give up on hope, like on quarterbacks who show up early in their career and they're, they're not producing much, but they take time to improve and they get better and better. And they've been in the league for three or four years. And then they start shining. Like Aaron Rodgers was, like around the same age when he finally got his starting role and was actually starting to be a really good quarterback. But yeah, like it's kind of that situation. Kind of like off topic, kind of along the lines you're saying of like, there's a lot of pressure on these young quarterbacks to like instantly produce. Yeah. Now that I think about it and you bring that up, I mean, how many times do we see a, a quarterback their first two to three years? They don't really do much. And yeah. everyone's like, oh, well, they suck. On to the next guy. Like, they want numbers immediately. And yeah. I think people forget that Rome wasn't built in a day. And I think we get spoiled with all these generation quarterbacks and stuff when they make an impact. And we kind of forget how long they took for them to develop. And I think we get spoiled when we see rookies, you know, have great numbers and stuff. And everyone's like, oh, this is how this guy should be. This is how this guy should be. Yeah, and even recently, you know, I think we've been – I mean, especially recently with, you know, Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen – uh, you know, Trevor Lawrence, those all these guys are getting drafted and they're starting immediately. It's like Bryce Young, Joe Burrow, all these guys, Tua, they 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 get drafted because they need a quarterback. And it's nothing against the management for drafting those players, but everybody wants to just hark on these quarterbacks so fast. And for the quarterbacks who who have succeeded early on, it's great because they're succeeding and nobody hates them or has any questions about them. But you have guys like, you know, Josh Allen's kind of been, he's been there. He's been dominant. He's been really good, but he, he won the big game. And so people doubt Josh Allen. He's a good quarterback. Like it's, it's, I don't know. It's questions like that. As far as when you draft this QB, how much expectations are you having? They're a great college quarterback. But when you look at Aaron Rodgers, it didn't even become anything until like 25 or 26 years old. How do you expect a 21-year-old to already be at that level? He just came out of college. Like, I can't – it can't be the same. Yeah. Man, it's it's interesting that that got brought up. I know it is off topic, but it's so true in this day and age. It's like with any position, really, they don't have time to develop because they're already being cut from teams or, or like traded – to another team just to go be a backup. So, like, Mac Jones's trade to the Jaguars was interesting. I guess mm -hmm. we can get on another trade because everybody's thinking Trevor Lawrence is the guy. Well, why why are they trading for Mac Jones? Why do they want Mac Jones to come over here? Say, well, in case to, Trevor gets injured, maybe maybe? Push, to push Trevor Lawrence, maybe he's going to possibly start. True. Could be getting you know. complacent. Yeah. And so – and that's another guy, like, Mac Jones – I know a lot of people don't like him, whatever, but I know that he does try his best to work hard and get better. And, I mean, if you're in this 
I know it's easier said than done, but like, if you're looking at a professional athlete, it's their job. They want to get better. I know some don't, but at the same time, I know that like all, like a lot of people have liked the trade. Like a lot of, he's from there, he's from Florida. And so a lot of those fans are kind of actually accepting him in and it could be a good thing for him. And I know he, he, I feel like he was a good college quarterback. Uh, He did a lot of really good things and showed his talent at Alabama. I know that doesn't exactly always translate into pros, um, but I think he could be one of those guys that that slowly develops with the right coaching staff around him uh, and the right training. And I think he could possibly become something, you know, even here. Like he may not necessarily take his spot, but he could get traded down another time down the line and become something again. Uh, I just I think the whole situation in New England was pretty crappy in general. Uh, I don't think it's just on him. I think there's a lot of problems in New England. Um, but that was another trade that kind of threw me off was like, I thought Trevor Lawrence was the guy in Jacksonville. And now they're, you know, trading for Mac Jones. Like, wh- why do they want Mac Jones to be a backup? Uh, so that's something. Um, trying to think. Oh, oh, uh, Chase Young to the Saints. Oh, yeah, the Saints. I actually like that. I, I like that. Me trade. too. Yeah. I mean, a good pickup. With Cam Jordan, I mean, he's getting up in age. He's probably going to be retiring soon. I mean, Young's only been in the league for the last three or four years. Yeah. I love the trade, honestly. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got any other ones? I mean, Michael Thomas went bye-bye. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, we should get rid of Derek Carr. That's for another episode. Uh, I don't care how much money we lose. I think it's worth it in this one. Um, Josh Jacobs. Uh, wait, no, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones left. Josh Jacobs, I think, got traded. Yeah. Uh, was he to the Packers now? Yeah. Yeah. Aaron jo- Jones got dropped and I think got picked up by the Vikings or someone. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, man. Crazy. Crazy offseason, bro. A Justin lot. Fields, a lot obviously, of the big one. Justin Fields being traded for a sneeze and a little penny uh, to the Steelers. Honestly, if I'm the Bears, I honestly think you could have gotten more out of him. I am a guy who does believe in Justin Fields. I think the system that he got put in in Chicago failed him. Uh, I think him going to a good uh, a good uh, coaching and management Steelers, uh, you know, somehow Mike Tomlin finds a way to get to the playoffs every year and stay above 500. Uh, I think it's a better pickup than Kenny Pickett. Uh, but I like Justin Fields. Well, and Russell Wilson. Yes, that's true. Russell Wilson to the Steelers. <laughs> and honestly, I'm going to be honest, because the Steelers, what, they gave them a six round, they gave the Bears a six round pick. But if Justin Fields plays more than 50 game, uh, more than 50% of the games, it goes to a fourth rounder. I bet we see Russell or Justin Fields. I, I bet we either see Russell Wilson play for like nine or 10 games. They're going to bench him. And they're going to put in Fields, or we're going to see Fields play eight games. He's going to suck. They're going to bench him. Regardless, the Bears, you got screwed. Uh, you suck at trading. Let me tell you, dude. Uh, <laughs> Justin Fields for essentially like two six round picks or something like that. I don't even know. Regardless, it was a terrible trade. Uh, but congrats on Caleb Williams if that was your goal. Honestly, again, I think you could have done a lot better. Uh, think of New England, you know, they need a quarterback, although they'll probably draft a white guy because that's what they do. Um, all right. Crazy <laughs> stuff. Got any other – any big ones? Not really, man. I yeah. I will say I find it interesting that even the Steelers wanted Justin Fields because of the fact they had just gotten okay. Russell Wilson. And I saw something. It was like, hey, if you're Justin Fields, you have you owe it to the Steelers because all 31 teams passed up on you except the Steelers. They somehow saw something in you and they decided they wanted you. So you have them to prove and you've got nothing to lose. You just got to go out there and play balls to the walls and just show them what you got. You, I yeah. mean, you're the only that's, you got to play for them, dude. You got to show them who you are. A yeah, lot unfortunately, of count you that, unfortunately, I think what's going to ultimately happen though I think they're going to choose Russell to start and he's going to be a backup. And yeah. I, I just, I don't, 
I don't know why. I just think that's going to happen. I think Russell will start. I think it's because of the veteran and the experience and what Russell has done in the past. Yeah. He'll definitely start. Yeah. I guarantee right now in the quarterback four, it's QB one's Russell Wilson and QB two is Justin Fields. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, nobody else there is going to be in the competition for it. I can tell you that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't think I have anything else unless you have anything oh else. Gosh. All right. Moving on, some soccer news. Uh, the USA uh, took down Jamaica 3-1 today in extra time. Uh, in the CONCACAF Nations League semifinal, Panama and Mexico are currently playing. Uh, the winner of that will probably be Mexico. They'll play the U.S. We're in the finals. I think that's Sunday. Uh, if it's not Sunday, then it won't be until the summer when they resume. Uh, it's usually in the summer. Uh, and then it's international break for uh, the – the world, yeah, it's international break, uh, so you won't see any club teams playing this week. Uh, club teams will pick up not this weekend, but the next weekend. Uh, the Champions League draw came out, um, so we've got some exciting fixtures for the Champions League. That will resume Tuesday, April 9th, but the quarterfinal draw is Arsenal versus Bayern Munich, Real Madrid versus Manchester City, Atletico Madrid versus Dortmund, and PSG versus Barcelona. So some very, very, very exciting fixtures. My eyes are going to be glued to Real Madrid, Man City, because uh, I think those two are the favorites to win the Champions League. Um, and then I can't wait for Arsenal to get demolished, and I can't wait to honestly see what Atletico Madrid and Dortmund have. Because right now they're obviously the dark horse. Uh, so that's all the soccer news I've got. Not very exciting this week. I'm gonna be honest. well. Actually, I take that back. The last time we recorded, uh, we had Liverpool, Man City, and we had Arsenal. Currently, right now. Because Liverpool and Man City tied, Arsenal is now in first place. And then it's followed by Liverpool and followed by Man City. It's one point and then another point. I think it's like 64, 63, 62 or something like that. So exciting finish. Also, the Premier League has handed down uh, point deductions towards Leicester City and Nottingham Forest this last week for violating financial fair play rules. If you don't know what that is, essentially during the transfer window, they're making illegal transfers. Uh, illegal like transactions. Uh, it's a little iffy, so I'm not going to get into it because it can get confusing for me. Uh, but essentially, they uh, failed to comply uh, and they had financial fair play issues. So they got point deducted. Uh, so the table looks a little bit different. Yeah. So yeah, that's all the soccer news I've got for us this week. Uh, John, you got any other news from any other sports? Oh uh, yes, I do. Um, I, I guess I can start off with golf. I typically go golf after you go soccer. Um, so Scotty Scheffler won the Players Championship this last weekend. Um, and what's funny about it, that's I mean, that's really kind of all I've got for that. But he won the Arnold Palmer the weekend before, and he got first place. And the Wyndham Clark got second place in both tournaments behind him. So. And both by like one stroke. So the the feeling Wyndham Clark must have for losing to Scotty Scheffler probably isn't too too good right now. But yeah. with Scotty Scheffler, I mean, if you don't watch golf or didn't watch the the Players Championship, uh, he had actually gotten a little hurt. He kind of like tweaked something in his back or his neck or something like that uh, in the second round, and then it affected him to his third round. And he was still able to win the tournament. On the fourth day, he went crazy, uh, shot eight under, and was able to take the lead. And then three guys were in competition in the last couple holes, and they just weren't able to catch him, uh, ultimately losing – all three of them losing by one stroke um, on the 18th hole. But anyway, so Scotty Schiffer won two in a row. It's crazy. Uh, he may not catch Tiger's records and stuff like that, but the dude's on a hot streak, and – uh, he's definitely the best golfer in the world right now. Uh, also, I guess since we're sticking kind of with me, uh, so Caden Proctor, offensive lineman from Alabama, had transferred to Ooh. Iowa, and there was a situation there with some illegal talking possibly throughout the season, whatever that looked like. Um, well, even after all that crap that went on at Iowa, I guess he found out that the grass is not always greener on the other side. And he is set to be rejoining Alabama uh, again. And so this whole transfer portal thing is really throwing a lot of people off because it's something that we've never seen before. It's like you're on a team, you leave it, 
because you can, and then you just don't even play a snap for the team that you just left to, and you are now back at the team that you left for the beginning. Yeah. Um, let's see. Aaron Donald retired. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Got to be yeah. one of the greatest defensive players of all time, to be honest. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. He's got to. Uh, I think he'll definitely go down with a, a jacket on. Um, yeah, it's. I was kind of sad. I was like, dang, that just happened, like, out of nowhere. Like, I was not expecting that to happen, and it just kind of did. Um, he apparently just was kind of tired. I think he, he was just exhausted. That's kind of what he, he said. He won everything that he needed. He wasn't going to get an MVP. I mean, he's yeah. got defensive MVPs. He's got a Super Bowl. So... Great career, honestly. Legendary status. He was yeah. a force to be reckoned with every single Sunday. I mean, dude's getting triple team, quadruple team, double team, all the team. I mean, you can't go one on one against him. He's gonna beat you every time. So yeah. I mean, you're doing something right. And then I've got one more uh, little thing of news in the NBA. Kevin Durant passes Shaq for eighth all time scoring. So that was wow. something that happened uh, just KD. Huh? Shout out to K D. Yeah, yeah. Also, I think we're about a month off from the NBA Finals. I mean, uh, playoffs. Yeah, yeah, we are. Exciting times. Go Thunder. Thunder up. <laughs> hey, I, speaking of your Thunder, I saw a uh, commercial today. Chet and – Chet. Yeah. Hey, Chet. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I've got a buddy of mine who doesn't like that commercial. And I was like, hey, we don't disrespect them, okay? There's some goats. <laughs> All right. When you see them, you go, man, you, you back, right? <laughs> nah. uh, but yeah, that's all I've got as far as news and sports world. Yeah, well, that's all I've got. That's uh, all that I've got. Um, so, yeah, that's all we've got. March Madness, good luck. Let us know who you think is going far in the finals, who you have in the final four, your championships. Make fun of us in the comments in our posts below. Uh, you guys stay safe. Uh, we love all of you guys. Thank you guys for always listening to us and listening to our terrible takes. Uh, and yeah, see you guys. Peace. Bye.